The following show may contain strong language and content of an adult nature and has been classified by FM 104 as unsuitable for those under 15 years of age. Now, live from Dublin's Docklands, this is the FM 104 Phone Show with Chris Barry and Keith Ward. And uh, they still have the Christmas decorations up. Yes, it is the FM104 phone show. The first one live of uh, uh, 2016. It's a minute after nine. It is Monday, the 4th of January. You have been, you've been hounding us, actually, for the past few hours. A lot of uh, local news stories coming into us. Just bear with us. Uh, some breaking news. I'll get to that in a little bit if I can as well. We're just checking a few things out for you. And uh, by all accounts, from some of the... Uh, some of the emails we're getting over Christmas, uh, especially the ones, you know, the ones we like, Keith, the ones that appear at four thirty in the morning. Yeah, to be fair, we're always up to, we're yeah. always up to, to, to read them. So it's not that big of a deal. I mean, you're usually up. I'm yeah. usually up at half four in the morning. But they've been inundated. There was, there was a woman who, there was a woman who even sent us something today, going, "I'd laugh." Like, can you update your podcasts? <laughs> so we haven't been live in about a week and a half. There are no podcasts or update, but I guarantee you they'll be online tomorrow after tonight's show. Just just chillax a bit. Oh, exactly. The They're that eager. But listen, there's a lot of people listening in um, tonight who've broken the back of the first Monday back of the new year. I'm not too bad. I did it last night. Yeah. But Mike, how are you feeling? You're back. I'm fine. I, I, I'm still there. Where I was, I'm still there. This is a different country. <laughs> yes. This is a beach somewhere. It was. It was. When everyone else was getting lashed on by Storm Frank. Have you heard of Storm Frank, Chris? Yeah. You probably I, I, hadn't, had you? No, I, I, online, yeah. Yeah. Actually, Christmas. no, I, I came back in it. You were in paradise for I was two uh, Storm. Actually, was it Frank? And, uh, what was after Frank? There was something else after Frank. Gertrude. I think Gertrude and I was, met. Yeah, Gertrude was a bit of a wagon, which wasn't yeah. as bad. Frank was an awful Yeah, shite. and it was, it was... Somebody was saying to me, it, it was the most miserable Christmas day weather-wise in, in centuries. It was horrible. Absolutely. Dreadful. You couldn't do anything. You couldn't even walk the dogs in it. Anyway, it's the phone show live for uh, Monday. 6797. FM 104 is our phone number 53 104 for 20 cents if there is anything you want to get off your chest uh, do it now the uh, well th- th- there's certainly one thing a lot of people have been commenting on uh, quite a lot you probably have seen the video doing the rounds in the last couple of days this is about the bouncer stamping on a man's head while he lies on the ground outside a, a, a nightclub in Kilkenny this of course caused outrage with many people labelling the behaviour of the bouncer as disgusting it's believed the bouncers were sacked or reported to the, to the cops after the footage uh, emerged do you know what I found quite amazing Have you, all the newspapers were talking like a well known nightclub yeah Jesus lads we're looking at the video just name it uh, now many of you think this is a perfect example of uh, bouncers and doormen being power hungry overly aggressive but We've been messaged by quite a few doormen who say actually uh, they've a really tough job particularly over Christmas you know what bouncers hate over Christmas? You know... Uh, it gets a bit messy. Yeah, Johnny hasn't been out all year and Johnny's at the Christmas party and decides to drink everything laid in front of him and then goes from the from one pub to another and is, uh, can't understand why they won't let him in. Well, from some of the, the bouncers that have been messaging us on Facebook, it's not just drink they're worried about. Yeah. People coked off their heads, coming up, being aggressive, being violent. I mean, you try telling, uh, you try telling someone... Is coked off their head that they're not getting in, mate. Matt's just saying that to them. They're not going to take it nicely. So these guys, honestly, I feel sorry for them. These guys put up with a lot of crap, especially over the last two weeks over Christmas. I think they've done an incredibly difficult job. And I don't care to, to be people texting in, having a go, saying I'm sticking up for them. But And you are. But uh, is he right? Give us a ring. 6797FM04 is the phone number. They, uh, I mean, some of the... Uh, guys, a few dormant who say they, they've a very tough and difficult job when dealing with drunk and aggressive punters, as Keith was saying. It's not just booze, it's drugs as well. Uh, they say it's actually uh, them who get... A, the, the, it's, you'd love this. They say it's actually them, the bouncers, who get abused on a nightly basis and claim the job actually is as dangerous as being a guard. I can see that, yeah. 
But they have to be being a bouncer is as dangerous as being a guard. Uh, how many people uh, agree with that? You, you've seen, God, there's been quite a few videos. I mean, I have dealt with some bouncers are really good. I mean, really, they are good. Mm. Then I've dealt with brain donors. Assholes, yeah. I'm being nice, brain donors. Mm. And that's that's me holding back. And you've th- been diplomatic. I mean, there's that brain cell died years ago. Some That's what you're dealing with. Some, and there are some guys who are brilliant. What do you think? There's some people reckon, because we put this up in our Facebook page. You want to see the video, actually, that Chris was talking about on the F104 phone show uh, page with Chris Barry. The people commenting under, uh, under the, the, the video saying uh, a lot of bouncers are just failed guards. Couldn't make it as a guard. Ouch! I don't think the guards would like that somehow. I don't think the guards would have them. Uh, no. Okay. So it, it, they reckon seriously some of them, and some of, see, see some of these guys take it seriously. They're actually really, really good. Have a look at the video. Let us know how you feel, uh, and maybe if you actually, you know, if, would you ever witness somebody being refused in, and you thought, well. They're out of their heads. Mm. You can't let them in. And just because, I hate to say, you you go up to a nightclub doesn't necessarily mean you have a God-given right to, to get in there. Let us know how you feel. 6797FM104 is our phone number. If you have any uh, quick thoughts on that, we will take it. Uh, we'll go to a few people on the phone. By the way, you can, you can give us a text as well, 53104 for 20 cents. Adam is on the line. Hello, Adam. How are you? Grand yourself, how are you? Very good. You, you, you're, you're, you actually don't like them at all. No, I don't know. Why? Why? Because there's no need to be dickheads. You know what I mean? That's darling. And when you say dickheads, in a se- what, what have they ever done on you? They refuse me for nothing. You can't. You walk up and you say regulars only. How the fuck can you be a regular if the stupid fucking mongos don't let you in? Like? Well, hang on, hang on. Easy in the language. Uh, if you turn around and say, you see, this is. I reckon 90% of the time uh, they're going to refuse you because you're jarred. Yeah, but I don't even be jarred. I just do be... Uh, yeah, jarred. but you see a lot of people... I just, do, I just do be out of banger, like, but should they don't know that. You know you're I mean? just out of what? I do be out of head, like. You're out of the head. There you go. What on, was Keith... What on, was... On, on, what on was, what? On, yeah, I'm afraid to even ask. On what? Uh, sure, come here. Say no more, you know? Okay, so you're out of the head. You're out of the head. And you're wondering why the bouncers won't let you in. No, they don't realise that. You know what I mean? But they, maybe they do. You see, maybe they actually do realise it. No, see, they don't. That's the thing. Most people up, looking at you will realise you're out of your head. You walk up. Be it drugs or drink or both. Uh, I do both. Well, there you but go. They, there you go. They, 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 you don't really have an argument here, really, do you? I mean, let's be honest. I do have an egg. You don't. <laughs> I do have an egg. Ah, oh, give me a break. It's only eight minutes back and you're actually trying to argue. I have seen it. You're out of your head when you go up to the bouncer, okay? You're, uh, maybe you don't drink. You're on God knows what. And you're wondering why the go the guy won't let you in. No. I don't blame him for not letting you in. See, how would they know? I, like, I don't walk up... I walk do it. Maybe because your eyes are glazed, you I look do, stoned do, out of your head. I do a few sniffs here and there, do you know what I mean? Like and like and I'm walking up to the nightclub and you go, Oh, regular zone. You can't be a regular if you don't let you in. Adam, do all do all your mates do a bit of sniff as you put it? Uh we do be all out of bangers, you know what I mean? When you get in the nightclub like And how how, head. how many how many people would walk up to the door? I don't know. Roughly. Only two, only two two or three of us at one at one go, do you know what I mean? And the rest will follow. So potentials could be what there could be ten lads going up separately off their heads, coked, coked off their heads. Oh, we don't be all coked out of the head, like you know what I mean. It's just you're walking up to a door, you say, "Oh, regulars only." You can't be a regular if you don't let you in. Simple as. Yeah, and but the thing is, uh, going on what you're saying, they wouldn't let you in anyway. That's just, this is what you're saying. They won't let you in. They wouldn't let you in. Okay, well, hold on a second. How many people listening right now? He's probably a very nice lad. Would you let Adam in? He's admitted, and I'm looking at some of the other stuff coming in. Not unusual for some of the bouncers to get that. Uh, 6797FM104 is our phone number. Darren, there you are. Hi, how are Not bad. That could have been one of your customers now. Uh, and, yeah, yeah. And you heard, you, you, you heard what he was saying. <laughs> Yep. And he was uh, he was out of his head and wasn't drink. Right. So there's a good reason why he's not going to get in. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Look, it's, it's more of a safety issue for himself as well. Yeah. Mm. Hey, hey, you hear what he say? Yolo, yeah. You only live once, man. Yeah. Look, I understand that, buddy. But at the end of the day, your life is my hands. You know, like if you went down the premises, you caused an injury to yourself or somebody else. Like I'm liable for that. 
You're not really. He is. Yeah, I am. He's the one that's sober. How are you going to know from out ahead, like, you know what I mean? Well, first thing I do, like, if I see you, you're in an agitated state, I'm going to assess you. John, I'm going to have a little chat with you. Where were you tonight? What were you doing? Just general, just uh, chat, just to pick up on things. Yeah. So you're doing that, really, Darren, just to suss out what sort of mood the guy is in. If exactly. he's a little bit aggressive, is, is he drunk? Is he on exactly. drugs? I Whatever. Don't know, 10, 10, 15 minutes beforehand, he could have had an argument with his girlfriend. Yep. Uh, he could have assaulted somebody down the street. Like, at the end of the day, I would duty a care to customers I have on the premises. Now, we get a lot of elderly people, which I don't think they should be around that sort of stuff. <clears throat> Hello? Yeah, OK. Uh, Adam, there you go. As far as he's concerned, he wouldn't let you in because, uh, by the way, very, uh, Darren, a lot of people texting this into us. How would you know if this guy had taken something other than drink? Uh, to be honest, like, they're very agitated with their hands, uh, dilated pupils, agitated states, sweats, um, hyper, um, can't really kind of have a conversation, you know. Yeah, so he's a little bit, I mean, Adam, you, you, you keep saying the bouncer would have no idea you've taken something. Yeah, he wouldn't. Because I don't do yeah, it. Just... I'm at a long time, buddy. I'm at a long time. Yeah, fair play to you, Darren, Darren, you know. I've drunk a long time, sir, but... Basically. Darren, what do you make of... Uh, what do you make of some of the comments that... Uh, reckon that being a bouncer is almost as dangerous as being a guard these days? The, yeah, the, the, I, don't, I, don't, I don't agree much. with that. Look, um, I said I'm working in the industry about 17 years. I've seen it all. Uh, two years ago, we had a hit and run accident outside the nightclub where uh, a man actually pretty much died in my arms. Uh, we went to the, the ambulance system... But you know, unfortunately, um, he died. So that's it. So that's the danger you're putting up with. Just to earn a couple not, of quid. Yeah, well, that's it. Look, we're not just on the door at the end of the day, what you call it, to, to protect people in the nightclub. At the end of the day, I'm going to leave the door if I see something like that across the road that somebody needs assistance, you know? And it's uh, not throwing my way around. It's not showing my authority. It's, look, it's just helping yeah, the public. That's good, because I've witnessed people getting stabbed and all, and the bouncers won't let them in nightclubs and all that. For their own safety. They're pushing them out, saying... You're outside our premises, we don't want nothing got to do with you. But then, then again, it falls back on them, because yeah. they're refusing to let them in. And I've seen it happening. Well, look, I agree with you what you're saying, but see, you got to remember this, that there is different sorts of security. Now, that's up to the establishment, what they employ. Some establishments, they employ just um, the drone doorman. Others hire a security company. Like, you're better off hiring a security company, because that's where you get the, 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 the proper uh, training. Where these kind of clubs and pubs that just hire their own kind of crew, and that, there's no training there whatsoever. And do you think that some of the clubs, they hire cowboys, let's be honest? They do, to be honest. And it's very, very easy to get a licence nowadays. And, and this is the big, big, big uh, problem. Well, the licence come in and a page cut, or sorry, the wage cut uh, come in. <clears throat> like the standard of doorman uh, has decreased that uh, kind of rapidly throughout the years. Mm-hmm. OK. Who would be a doorman now? 6797FM04 is our phone number. Talking to Darren, he actually works as a bouncer doorman. Uh, security consultant, but he's pleased he's straight up about it. Uh, and now... The footage that emerged, a lot of you are just having a look at the, it's on our Facebook page at the moment, caused outrage uh, with many people labelling the behaviour of the bouncers as disgusting in this case. It's believed the bouncers were sacked after the footage emerged. Many of you uh, think this is a perfect example of bouncers and doormen being power hungry and overly aggressive, but would uh, we've been messaged by quite a few doormen, and uh, you're listening to what uh, Darren was saying there, uh, who say that they've actually a really tough job to do dealing with drunk and aggressive punters and also drug crazed punters as well, particularly over Christmas it was a little bit OTT 6797FM04 is our phone number they actually say that it's them who get abused on a nightly basis and claim the job is more dangerous than the guards give us your views on that and what what would you do there's Adam there's Adam who takes God knows what uh, before he goes up to the nightclub and his attitude seems to be actually they wouldn't know we're, all, we're only having a little bit of uh, uh, you know a, a, a bit of, bit of crack uh, and he means fun in that case okay uh, Chris uh, this is from Paddy and Bowman Chris is a former uh, security guard most bouncers are little Hitlers but half the time uh, they need to be now, there you go That that's interesting half the time they need to be Darren explain that well look that I don't know I suppose look there's, there's two types of people out there like, I'm only kind of going on my personal experience and oh, what I do. Like, I'm nice to my customers at the end of the day, but, like, if it comes across the line, like, I'm able to defend myself. If someone, if someone comes at you, Darren, and they're quite aggressive at the swing and punches, yeah. Yeah. you have to be able to defend yourself. You can't, you can't just course. stand there and, and politely say, no, step aside there. 
looking has happened. We we got attacked there about I think it was uh, two or three years ago. There with a hatchet on the door. Myself, my colleague. A hatchet. A hatchet. Yes. Yep. So somebody has a weapon. Uh, like yep. a, let's be honest. A hat, hatchet is a pretty pretty dangerous weapon to have. And was there exactly. what, what was what, why in God's name were, were they carrying um, a hatchet? Did you find out? Before, yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, before we arrived to the door, which normally we turned up say about eight o'clock. This guy had a grievance with another kind of punter that was on our premises at the time that we weren't aware of. Right. Now the gentleman he kind of left after there was a few kind of uh, saps thrown or whatever you want to call it. Uh, he left. and came back an hour later. We wouldn't let him onto the premises, so he said, "Go to his car, produce a hatchet." I had a few customers uh, in front of me, which I had to step forward to protect them. That's you know, <sighs> that's hardly the first thing you expect when you start your 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 your, your job is some agent coming at you with a with a hatchet. That's it. Yeah. Look, look. I've seen uh, petrol bombs, guns. You name it. Petrol bombs. Yep. Yep. Guns. Where where are you? Uh, don't mention, for God's sake, where you've worked. But it sounds like the Wild West. Yeah, look, I worked in nice places, look, I worked in rough places, but at the end of the day, it's like this, that society has changed. Now, I'm all for the elder people. At the end of the day, there's a lot of older people out there that should be allowed to come out and have their nightlife without being in fear of these little thugs going around and throwing their weight around. OK, hang on a second, uh, Darren, stay with us. Uh, there you go, that guy's seen it all. Uh, 6797FM04 is our phone number. 53104 for 20 cent. Keith, you were saying, as far as you were concerned, yeah, there are morons out there, but there are, they, they can't all be Egypts. Who were the, well, what, the punters? <laughs> no, the bouncers. No, they can't be all. They, they put up with a lot of crap. And you think about it, honestly. How many people would do Christmas, that? <laughs> Say, you know what Dame Street's like at two o'clock on a Saturday night. It was busy all over Christmas. Who? Not even that. Let me tell you, this video that we're talking about, as I yeah. said, it's on the phone show page. Where did it happen? Kilkenny. Where was I? New Year's Eve. Kilkenny. Kilkenny. I, that's I saw. I, I I didn't see this incident. Obviously, people and look. I'm no angel myself, but people were falling around the place, falling out of bars. Were were there all night? Some of them were drinking since eight o'clock that day. I seen about five fights out in the streets in the middle of Kilkenny City. It was it was mayhem. Okay, hang on a sec. Is anybody any sympathy for the bouncers? Let us know. Six seven nine seven F M O four is the phone number. Five three one zero four for twenty cent. Mary's on the line. Mary, you're live on F M O four. How are you, Mary? Ah, uh, hi. How's it going? Not bad. Now, this is your son. Don't mention any uh, club if you don't mind, uh, for obvious legal reasons. But your 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 son was beaten up by a bouncer. Yeah, by about uh, yeah, a few of them. He was in um, he was in. November for to celebrate his 18th birthday. Right. Um, he had a few drinks at home. He was perfectly fine leaving the house. He went into town with his sister and his pregnant girlfriend. Went into town to go to one of the nightclubs. He actually, I don't think, he even had had any drink in town or anything because he wanted to go straight to a nightclub. And he kept, he's just asking the bouncer. He's a bit naive, you know. He, he was wondering why they wouldn't let him in. You know, he didn't understand that once he was. He was right fairly age, young anyway, wasn't he? Yeah, once he was the right age, he thought that he'd be allowed in. You know. And uh, they refused him. He refused them entry. He refused them entry into the nightclub anyway. So we finally left. And um, as you. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to come. I'm going to take commercial break and come straight back to you, Mary. Give you a bit of time I ho- I hope to sort not, out the child. I hope that's not Mary's son in the background. I know that's. A, a, I think I know he's young, but that a bit young there. We got to take a break anyway. Six seven nine seven F M O four is our phone number. Chris, I went to a bar after work on two occasions. Hadn't even had one drink. I was refused on one and let in at another. Same bouncers. The difference, one night I was wearing a nice top. Uh, black trousers and heels. The second one I was let in and I was wearing a tight uh, top skirt and heels. It's not just about... Uh, yeah, you're right. You've you got to look. You, they're, uh, she said they're sexist pigs as well. They are. But they call it a dress coat, don't they? I think, look... Reading between the lines, I think we all know that women dressed sexy mm-hmm. are going to get into a nightclub. And, 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 but she's it. right in what she's saying. Uh, we'll come back uh, to Mary in a second. Say, by the way, Adam on the phone there hates all bounces. You heard his attitude. He And it's not unusual. A lot of people are saying it's not unusual for a lot of lads to go up to a nightclub. And they're sober, but they've had, God knows, whatever drug. We're going to find out what exactly that is after the break. 6797-FM04 is our phone number. On the FM104 phone show, the man who gets Dublin talking. Miss him. 
miss out. FM 104. Welcome back. It's the phone show live. 6797 FM 104 is our phone number. You're t- chatting away there to Mary before the break. Mary, this is about your son. It's his 18th birthday. He's out with his girlfriend uh, and his mates. Uh, you were saying he's a little bit naive, was he? Hello, Mary. We'll try and get Mary back. Okay. We've got a John who actually is a doorman himself. Uh, John, how are you? How are you doing, guys? Not bad. Not bad. Okay. Quick question to you. Adam, who uh, was on there, I think we still have him online. Adam, are you still there? Of course, yeah. Yeah, we got Adam. Uh, his attitude, look, he's straight up about it. Uh, he was refused and uh, he didn't understand why. And I think it was pretty clear. If, you, if you're going up to the bar and you're half coked out of your mind, it's a pretty good reason not, not to let the guy in, I would imagine, John. Well, it's, it's, it's probably several different reasons. Yeah. Why we've been letting in, you know what I mean? It, it's hard to say now over the phone because, like, the bouncer's job, I won't call the bouncer's job, the door supervisor's job is to kind of look, mm-hmm. look at the people and see what they look at the first place. And we have to make decision in the split second. So you've got to, you, you got to look the part as well. This is what you say. You know I mean, you have to look the part. And as I said, for us, it's a difficult job because we have to make the decision within the second because if you made the wrong decision, it's going to be absolute nightmare. Afterwards, one you know one, I mean? one guy. I don't want to say who he is. One guy just uh, phoned us in. Now he's a nightclub owner. He's on his way in to his nightclub, and he said, "I'm not going on the air." But why don't you tell people one of the reasons we don't let them in is that we're not running a charity. We're running a business. Uh, no, well, no, again, that's a bit extreme. Okay, yeah. I, I, I really disagree with that. But as I said it before to the guy that offline, I'm going to give you absolutely perfect example what we have to put up with it, okay? And then the people can make a decision after that. I'm not going to mention any places or stuff like that. Happened a couple of months ago, like, at me and Judy, the guy in the nightclub, he was going all over the place, mm-hmm. pushing people, acting weird. So we came to the stage that he asked him to leave, okay? We came up to him and asked him nicely to leave. So he was kind of understandable, nearly on the way out. He turned around and he grabbed the second doorman by his neck, right? He didn't grab no one for reason, okay? So we managed to get him out the door. But obviously, you have to use the force because he jumped at us. He was so annoyed that he's having asked to leave. But the reason why he was asked to leave because there will be a motor inside if he would stay because he was actually annoying all the customers. So annoying? Was he was he really aggressive with everyone? I mean, did he lose it? Down the floor, pushing people, that's some really tough. Okay, so that would be literally a matter of the time when the fight would break out. Okay, so he was asked to leave. So before he left it, as I said, he grabbed one of the doormen by the neck because he was so annoyed, he tried to push him downstairs, okay? Mm-hmm. So we have to use the force to get him out the door. Now, this is the part where the people are seeing. The people outside, they see us using force to bring someone else. But they didn't saw what but happened. But they didn't inside. see what happened prior to that. So yeah. they, now, uh, while we get them out the door, the chap turned around. Oh, my God, he called us all the names in the world. He was spitting at us. All the furniture in front of the building, mm-hmm. he was thrown at the door. And at the end of the day, he managed to damage my own car, okay? Because it was so annoying. He kicked the car, my car was damaged. So it cost me all money to get it fixed. I managed to chase, I managed to place the guy in the next day. So he paid for the damage. And when I met with this chap on the next day, he was a different man. He was so nice. He was so kind. He apologized. He, he said all the nice words on the planet you can imagine. So there you go. There you go. But Adam, you were saying he he didn't react like that for nothing. The punter. Yeah, exactly. He didn't react like that for nothing. Why did why did he react like that? Because he's a nasty attitude. No, but that's what I'm saying. Like he wasn't like you just have to understand. The doorman cannot touch anyone. Okay, we don't touch anyone. We approach well, the customer. We ask still, him to leave. You still do it. Yeah, as I said, some of them are still doing but like, I'm talking about this particular incident. And that, as I say, you're talking about 50 50 chance, you know what I mean? The people, only, as I say, the people taking videos when bouncers are going on. But nobody's taking videos when, when like, no one talked to video when that chap was throwing stuff like throwing the doors. But no one talked yeah, to video when that chap was throwing no, no. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You, like I said, you still should be uh, stamping on people, especially two of them. I don't know for some say, like, as I said, there's no need for a fight and stuff because, like that. But if someone goes around it, and grabs those doors. If I had a founder that was one of my friends, I'd have went back and I would have cut them bouncers up. Simple as. Yeah, why? Because we asked, we asked your mate to leave? No, no, then no. Then he jumped no, off. No, because the way you react to people, the way you respond, is our attitude. What do you mean? What, 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 what do you mean? you going to respond if someone grabs you by the neck. What would you should do? Yeah, to stand and do nothing. If you knew he's half cool, if you knew he's half cool, if you knew he's half cool, and you knew that he's probably what, out ahead or whatever, 
you just retain, restrain them wherever you're talking Well, that's to. what we're trying to do. Exactly. Hang on, hang on a sec, guys. Hold, John, hold on a second here. Adam, you, you've just said to John, if that was one of your mates, you'd go back to people like John yeah, and you'd cut them up. So that that so how reasonable are you if your reaction to a doorman getting rid of some drunk punter who could be one of your mates is that you'd knife him? Yeah, I would knife him. Yeah, yeah but that's what that's what I'm saying. Like, we, Jesus, you're not the brightest, you know I mean? are you, Adam? Uh, like, we, have to, we have to, we have to, we have to buy, we have to wear a stab vest and all that stuff. Nobody provides that stuff. There is no security company out there that gives you a stab vest. No, there's no company out there that gives you uniforms. Okay, everything is cast. And there's no company out there that's me standing on people's heads. I'm not saying there's some people said I say not all the doormen are perfect. There's a lot of doormen that do the wrong job. You know, they really do what they are doing, okay? But hang on a sec, you're right, N- not every doorman's behaving like that, but to turn around, Adam, and say that, you know, you'd, you'd actually uh, cut the, the the doorman up if he annoyed one of your mates, it's, it's making no sense. But again, John, that's the mentality you're dealing with. If Ad- Adam was there, Adam is given out because he'd a few drugs on him and the bouncer refused him. Now, it, it was a good reason, uh, because obviously if Adam and his mates got in... And there was a problem. A he a he would be a complete nightmare. Adam. You'd be a complete nightmare to deal no, with. I wouldn't. Hell, I am a sessioner. I can drink all day, do drugs all night, and I'm still an animal to be with. And, and that's what you get. And then, and then you try to put these people out. And then it's all all the talks and the Facebook and all these bounces here, these bounces here. But there is no other way. If someone turns around. If someone stands there and says, "No, I'm not going anywhere," do you know what I mean? We are paid to do our job. We have to get them out of the premises. Yeah, and I understand you're paid to do a job, right? But you're also paid, right, not to have such a stinky attitude towards people. I understand you put up with a lot of shit. But what do you mean by stinky attitude? If you come to work the door and they say, look, not tonight, what's the point of standing there in an argument? Just turn around and walk away. If he says not tonight, what he means is, we don't like the look of you, we don't want you to come in, just go away. Exactly. And when you That's what it means. Say, it's straightforward English. When you turn around and say regulars only, how the fuck can you be a regular, right? If mm-hmm. You're never in, in a kip. You can't get into the place. I've had that said to me I don't know how many times. Do you, do you have, actually, hang on, do you have a dodgy look, Adam? No, I don't have a dodgy look or nothing like it. Because if you keep, if that's been said to you time and time, there must be a reason. No, do you know what I tell you what the reason for our base? What is? Because if someone walks up to the door, right? As I said, as we try to make the, the split decision, right? There is a chance if, if you change your mind. If you send someone, look guys, not tonight. If, if the customer steps aside, right? And he doesn't react badly or doesn't start melting. No, there's no crazy. attitude. No attitude coming from him. We just look at those people and say, look, no, it, it actually is okay. We let him in. But as I said, at 70 or 80% percent people that have been stopped at the door by the door, man, the first thing is, oh, fuck this and fuck you, right? So that means there is definitely no entry because after the four sentence we said not tonight, that's what we get. I don't want to know him inside when he's got the full drinks like, you know what I mean? And sometimes you can say not tonight, get a poli- get a decent answer, and you go, ah, go on, you can go in. But that's what we do. You just tell him, if he looks a bit strange or not the part of the club, you just tell guys, not tonight, we can back tomorrow night. And if some of the, most of the lads maybe stand aside, they chat, they jump away, they just act normal, and we look, now these lads are grand, we let them in. Uh, you know is, I mean? is it more drugs than drink now, John? It's, it's, it's everything, and the more the more I'm seeing the drugs are actually being used by so-called the top level people. Yeah, you know what I mean, that looks pretty cool and nice, and you should see them what they look in the end of the night. Yeah, I, I can only imagine, yeah. and I've I've seen I've seen some of the remains on the way home. Believe me, uh, around Christmas time here, six seven nine seven F M and O four is our phone number. Stay with us, John. Patrick is also Patrick. You got. Uh, Assaulted by a bouncer? I got assaulted by five, Chris. Five? Yeah, I was... Uh, Don't mention dance- names of clubs. No, 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 I won't, I won't. I was on the dance floor and uh, there was a conflict between me and another gentleman on the floor, but... Okay. I turned around and go, come on, we'll uh, talk to you outside. And I said, yeah, no, but I'd all follow them. But instead of just letting me walk out with them, the two of them, two of them first grabbed me, my two arms, and bent them back. And I, I, I just turned around and says, why you, what, I said, what, I said, I'm walking with you. I said, why are you, you like, pulling the arms off me, like, so, uh... So it was immediately aggressive, was it? Oh, straight away, straight away. And, uh, then they brought me out to the front door and they just said, you're not getting back in. I said, that's fair enough. But they said, you said you were bringing me out for a chat. And they, they just kept, they were getting, they were always, like, now I'm saying, I did have a few drinks on me, like, but I wasn't being 
like aggressive I didn't go for them or anything so I said listen I'm voice recording all this I said so I have proof for my own sake mm-hmm. and, and uh, they turned around and said stop taking pictures and I said I'm not taking pictures I said, I'm just pointing that there's a camera can see me here at the front door of this premises and uh, they were, before I knew it they, it, it wasn't even the head dorm it was the head it was the manager and he called for uh, backup and before I knew it they dragged me down around away from the camera one of them stood me, stood on my neck, stopped me for breathing, and the other four were kicking me, and they smashed my phone up in that process. They grabbed my phone, threw it on the ground, and stood all over it, ripped the shirt off me, they punched me in the face, everything. I, uh, Actually, uh, 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 Patrick, I think, without mentioning names, I think I remember this story. Yeah, I am. Um, because so, the penny's dropping with me now. Yeah, keep going, keep going. It's it, like, in saying that I'm not, the, I'm not the first person this has happened to in this premises. Right. But I, uh, I did um, turn around and said, right, uh, give me my phone back. I'm going to, I'm going to the guards. I said, go, go to the guards all you want. I said, we have the guards in our back pocket around here. Wouldn't, wouldn't actually give me my phone back. I walked around to the guard station and uh, I said, uh, tell them the story and all that. Like, my, my actual mother actually had to text my phone to say, we've gone to the guards. If you don't bring this phone back, like, we know exactly where to go or where, where to find you. Like, I am still in the middle of, like, soon processes. That, so, fingers crossed, now I get something out. And, no, I don't care about, don't want any, uh, like, compensation. I just want to get this place name and shame and get the bouncer's name and shame because the brutal force they use is unacceptable. And was there any logic to it whatsoever? No. I'm, no. I'm just, I'm just, you know, did you do something so terrible that they, that I mean, they they didn't restrain you; they attacked you. Yeah, oh, it was full. Like, like I, I nearly send you the pictures privately to show you my lips, my face, my hand, my shirt, pictures on my phone, like how bad they were. And the, the gas thing is, two weeks before that. A friend of mine went in the same premises and they had a knee into the, a girl's back while she was on, her ground, on the ground. A defenseless woman, like, and a fully grown man. Like, I'm not, I'm not a small man now. I'm, like, I'm a big enough lad. But for five lads to assault you like that is... But you, you don't have a chance if five lads... No, are no, 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 no. I'm like, especially, I know, listen, I'm, I, I don't security myself and, uh, listen, it is, it, it's not the nicest job in the world. But I've never had to, I've never used it, I've never restrained anyone, I've never put my hand on anyone. Because we're told when we do the course, the PSA course, you're not, you're only allowed to use reasonable force, and that's to defend yourself. You're not allowed to beat someone up, and they say that when you're actually in the course, that you can be sued for actually beating someone up. You can, you it's, can. I mean, you, oh, yeah. you have no right to assault anybody. I keep saying that to people, and it is true. Hang on a sec, mate. 6797 four is our phone number. We're talking about that video that did the rounds in the past uh, week, really. Really, uh, this happened, uh, it was all over Facebook, a lot of you were commenting, it's on our uh, FM104 uh, Facebook page, and caused outrage with many people labelling the behaviour of bouncers disgusting, it's believed the bouncers were sacked after the footage emerged, but has it come to that now, where your only defence, and a lot of it, this is coming in where... Uh, if they see you videotaping or, you know, you're, you're, ta- you're, you're recording anything with your phone, they'll smash your phone to pieces. A lot of those stories coming into us too. Sean, how you, Sean? Hello, how's it going? Not bad, Sean, go ahead. Yeah, not bad, yeah. No, I was, I was in a venue myself. I had Amy, my girlfriend was sexually assaulted. She was grabbed on the arse and uh, there was a bit of a bit of a score between me and your man and uh, security guards came over. Everything was grand. I was left because your mom, your mom was taken out. We identified him. Next day, after a few minutes after that, then same thing again. Another fella came over, put his, put his hand in my girlfriend's bag, tried to take something out of her bag. When he tried to take something out of her bag, I grabbed him and pushed him out of the way again. Same thing happened. Came, my security guard came over, told me I had to leave, refused me for the night club. When I was on the way, on the, on the way, on the door, on the way, on the way out of the door, there were two security guards. I wasn't refusing to leave. I was asked, I was, I was telling them I will leave the night club, no problem. I was walking out. I was put in, in into a restraint. I was restrained because of the way the way the way I reacted from mm-hmm. the fellow from the fellow um, grabbing my girlfriend by the arse. So he pushed my arm up behind me back, and he had my arm up very bad up behind me back. I was begging him to, to, to not let me to not to, to let me arm down because he was going to dislocate my shoulder. I could feel feel a lot of pressure on my shoulder. So then, ah, when that happened, he pushed my arm back down. As soon as that happened. Him. I was thrown down the stairs. I'm not saying the venue, but I was thrown. I was dragged down the stairs, hit with walkie-talkies in the head. I have video evidence 
uh, video evidence, picture evidence I can send in to you. Do. I have, I, send I, it I, in. I do. I send them. So I will. I'll send them in. I have everything there. It's just. It's a joke. It's the, way, it's the way they go on. They think they think they can they can do whatever they want. They, 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 because to be way. fair, there are there are guys calling us in now who are doormen and security guys, and they're very good at their job. In fact, some of the guys are calling us in. They're paid a lot of money because they don't behave in the way yeah. you you were yeah. saying. Because no club yeah. wants a reputation like that. Yeah. I mean, no, do you really, would you and I go to a club knowing well you might get the head kicked in if no, they don't like the wouldn't. look of you? You know no, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't even that. This was Halloween night, which everyone was dressed up, so it yeah. wasn't it wasn't as if thing. I'm not a small lad myself. That's why they called it a, a few a few few bounces over, and um, because it was a situation where I wasn't in the wrong, I was completely in the right. The place was overcrowded. There was the tickets were sold out, and they were letting people in. But they were letting people pay cash in at the door. But if I was, like in, if you get what I'm saying, the yeah. place was it was way too crowded. There was too much. There wasn't enough door men on to handle, and I was viciously assaulted. And there, there is. So there is a, a, a car case coming okay, up. Well, don't mention, don't mention anything else. Just send us in the pictures. Just don't mention court cases for God's sake, for your own sake. Uh, hang on a sec. Yeah, uh, John, you've been listening to some of those stories coming in, and it does, it does seem because a lot of the do- doormen are now calling us in, say, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, some of the guys are paid really well because they want the club and the and, 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 and indeed some of the big pubs to have a good reputation, not a bad one. That's what I'm saying. As I said it before a million, million times with all the, the fine, fine minds and all that, the door job is not actually uh, the money. You have to like the job because it's a tough job. And as I said, I'm seeing a lot of stuff as well that I, I disagree with what the doorman are doing. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Because it's really, really hard to find a good doorman, the really good security guys that are doing the jobs. So that's what we walk in the nice venues. Do you know what I mean? You and don't want some guy who is just in the gym every day, wired up on God knows what. Uh, you know, he's having a cocktail of garbage uh, with with his training, and he becomes. I mean, if you, if you take certain drugs, you're going to be very aggressive. Yeah. Steroids for the, you know, if you're if you're eating up the steroids for breakfast, that's that's not going to you know yeah, he- help your behaviour, is it? The job, Chris, is not about the size. It's a it's a it's a pure customer service skills. Okay? Are, you, are you using your head, not your fist? Exactly, because like if you, as my opinion is dormant, if you go as far as fight. Mm-hmm. From simple conversation, you're no good for the job. Okay, because you 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 should be able to stop everything before it even starts. You literally you know, but simply talking with the people. Do you know what I mean? They said I'm doing the doors for a good few years now in in this country, and I haven't been in a single fight that was caused by me, me being real or acting from else. The only fights we've been into if you literally have to jump in the middle of a fight to break them up. Okay. And to bring someone out to premises, I said, we only have to use the force. Personally, I am only use the force if it's absolutely necessary and if I feel threatened. I understand, like the chap saying, he be like, that's completely wrong. If he would say, look, he's walking out, he's still not wrong. Like, if I would there, let him walk. If he's willingly walking out... Yeah, but the thing is, him. Sean, they beat the crap out of you. Yeah, they beat, they, 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 they viciously beat me for no reason, for me doing their job. Like, I'm doing their job in their club, telling them... Who was doing stuff? Who was sexually assaulting people? Hey, to stop, trying to stop people from, from but taking the right people Going back, back to the few, few words that I said, that I, I, I disagree with that. That's completely wrong. If that's right, if that's a true story, that's absolute bullshit. That, that, that's wrong. The doorman shouldn't be doing stuff like they do. Okay, well, as, as, as I was taken out as well, well as, as soon as I was taken out of the door, out, out, out of the main door, I was thrown downstairs. And it was also, I have, the pictures that I got are in process of getting sent in at the moment as they speak. And uh, they are to be being sent them out. I was, I was hit in the head with a walkie-talkie into the eyeball, of which I have, I already have a bad eye. And I was hit into the eye with a walkie-talkie and called a little bollocks. This is what happens to you as little bollocks. Well, that, that, that's, in my, as I say, in my opinion, that's wrong attitude, and that kind of guy shouldn't be doing those, you know what I mean? Well, if, well, if you know... If your customer skills that you need to do that kind of job. Do you, all right, if you were hiring John, if I don't, are you still are you still in the business yourself, John? I 
Sorry, I'm you, Jeff. Okay, now if you're hiring somebody tomorrow, you probably need to do a lot of checking because if you get the wrong doorman, you're going to lose customers, you're going to get a bad reputation, and you're probably going to end up in court. And, you know, with your name, eventually, I know clubs will do everything to try and keep their name out of the paper, or out of the media. Eventually, it's going to get there. I know of four cases, so it's four cases that are going to appear in the next two months. And a lot of so-called good clubs are going to have a bad rap. But see, that's what I'm saying. Is that this, is, this, this industry is struggling because... There is, it's, it's a, like, that's where the people be taken out left, right, and central because there is no, it's really hard, as I said, it's really hard to find the, the good people to work because the money is not there for the job. Mm-hmm. The hours are not there for the job. And for everybody, this is only as a second job. Do you know what I mean? And the industry is struggling because it's a part time job. Decent people to, to, to do the job full time. I would love to do that job full time if I can earn a living out of it. But I can't. Hang on a second, John. I want you to listen to what Joe is to say here. It's FM 104's phone show. 6797 FM 104 is the number. Joe, how you doing? How you doing, Chris? You don't think that John is talking... He's talking rubbish as far as you're concerned. Yeah, he is talking, talking totally rubbish. Why? Because what had happened was we were at a venue one time, right? Okay. And what had happened was there was two chaps that was complaining that some of his drugs got soaking up because the girlfriend spilled a drink or something like that. Now, I managed to get the girlfriend outside into the hall and was talking to her. The bouncers ended up shoving us outside of the club, right? Nearly forcing us out to the door when I was trying to ca- calm the girlfriend down. Right. We eventually got outside the club and I was holding her up on the wall because she had a few too many to drink. And I got jumped on by the bouncers. I got jumped on. Now, they turned down says I was trying to strangle her. My name didn't even see what had happened. And I said to them, how can you turn around and say I was strangling her when I'm in my right frame of mind I was holding her up I don't drink I was sober as a judge and it's not the first time I've had this when I'm walking up to the door your man is turning around saying you have to make split decisions about guys being out of face and drunk and things like that I've had numerous refusals why are our, Why do you ask yourself why do you get numerous refusals every time you ask the bouncers they just say uh, not tonight when I turn around and oh, come on, you, it, it, every bounce is different. You, you know, they're different people you're dealing with. There was one night count. There was one night club I used to, was was trying to get in for ages. Right now, it is closed down now. Do you know how long it took me to get into the place to start getting entrance into the place? Tell me. Four, four months. Four months to start getting entr- entrance into the place. And do you know how embarrassing that is to go up? Yeah, it's humiliating when they when they say no, you're not getting in. When they start saying regulars only. But I mean, they didn't know me. And you know, you know you know as well as I do, if somebody says regulars only, what they mean is feck off and go away. This, the, 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 I can tell you here and now, is that they, they let, there was no way on earth this place could be regulars only because the other people that they were letting in, new people were coming in from different areas and all. That's a lot of crap. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, they just let in who they want to let in and they refuse who they want to let in. But, but that's their right, yeah, Sean, it is. Yeah. Sorry, but Joe. Then, but for your, your man there to turn around and say that we have to make split decisions on the basis of how they're walking up to the premises and how they're reacting. Should I be reacting as normal as poi because I don't drink? There'd be nothing wrong with me. And of course yeah, they turn and you say you're drunk. Imagine you going on on the phone like this now and I don't even want to see you when you get drunk. Why are you listening to you, Even your wife, you, even your wife is aggressive now, the way you're talking and you're sober, you're not yeah, drunk. Because you, yeah, you're, because it's your you know what I mean? Hang on, for starters, right, I'm after saying it to you, I'm a non-drinker, I don't drink. He I just said you're me. too aggressive, Joe. Yeah, but hang on, he's only turned around and saying, I can imagine what you are like on drink. I only turned around and says to him there, I do not drink. But he's just so, said you're bad enough off drink. Yeah, but I didn't know. But see, it's the point well, of... Right, when he gets this attitude, when he comes up the door and you tell him no, and he, 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 this is not happening no, immediately see, after no, you see, no, he it, no, he comes see, back next time, does that mean no entry for that? No, but see, the thing about it is, when I go up and I turn around and you say, not tonight, lads, right? And I turn around and say to you, why? You never give a valid reason. You know, you just say, it's not tonight, now go away. That's simple as that. Now, I'm asking you for a valid reason. So, whatever it is, the reason that you refuse me, I can walk on. You don't seem to give me a valid reason as to why I cannot get in or entry into a place. And that's why I am annoyed, because of the bullshit and the crap that you're spewing out on the radio. I think he just and gave you a reason, though. No, yeah, the reason I'm annoyed now is because of his bullshit. But when I'm going up into a nightclub, I don't act like this. It's the same time when I was in a place before. If you're coming up to nightclub and you say no, you just turn around and walk away, yeah? Or you stand there and argue like well, Okay, so if I turn around and say to you, well, what's the reason that you're not letting me in? Well, why don't you give reasons? Well, there could be numerous reasons. 
What are the reasons yeah, why it's regular but you, only? Yeah, but you're refusing me. Yeah, you. but you're refusing me, and you're why not giving me a valid reason. reason. Sorry. I said there's a number of reasons. The first you mentioned, right? Regulars only. Yeah, the but how can the dress code? Right to say the admission. Okay. It's a plenty of reasons. But okay. if you, even if it's, even if you be told no. It's just easier for you to walk the tone out and walk away. But if you stand there and even try to argument, there is no entry for the next time. Next time you think it's the same and the same and the same. No, you're picking my attitude up because I'm on the radio arguing. Your, 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 your comments. But I mean, you don't know me from Adam. And you're just refusing me. And you, the first three rules that you're out to saying there is the right to refuse a mission. But I mean, you don't know me from Adam. You don't know me from any which way. And you're there, you, you're using the law to suit, or you're using the rules to suit yourselves on who you let in and who you don't let in. And half the times, if, when I was let into places, I, I'd be honest with you, bouncers were actually surprised. They would actually thought that I'd be the troublemaker. But I wouldn't have been. I'd be more at the point that I'd want to, I'd want to get away with trouble, get away from the whole lot, and don't be involved in it. Yeah, but that's you, no, no, I, I can't make the decision now because I, don't, I can't see you. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? There has to be a reason, like, as I said, you may be coming to my door and be a different story altogether. I don't know. I, that's what I'm saying. That's what I try to make. To be, like, we try to make decision on the spot because we don't know what you look like and I don't know what you're going to act when you're going to be refused. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's well, the thing is, is that when I was asked if I'm going to gonna make the wrong look. decision, my head is going to be chopped at the end of the night. Do you know what I mean? In other words, are you saying, look, if somebody turns around to you and says, look, we're not letting you in, uh, we're not going to give you a valid reason. That is a good reason. You should, you know, use a little bit of cop on. If they don't want you in a nightclub, walk away. Simple as that. Walk away. There's a many... Because if you start looking for a reason, you're going to get into it. You're going to get into a row, Joe. Yeah, but the longer see, you're going to stand there, the longer you're going to argument, the less chance you'll be getting in. As I mentioned before, if someone says no, just to step aside, take a break, have a chat with your mates, yeah, but see, it's all the yeah, but... Yeah, but see, it's always down to your rules, what you make, what you deal with. Because you're going to be the ones that are going to be hanged if you're going to do a wrong decision. Not you. You're going to make a mess and sign and go walk away happy end. you know what I mean? We're going to be the ones that are going to be filling up the paperwork and make, clean up the mess. Not you. You're going to be yeah. you're going to be thrown out. You'll be running away. You'll be jumping in a taxi. And you'll be gone. No one's no, going to. Hang on for a minute. Yeah, but see, th- this is the point. You're putting it down as if I drink and I'm aggressive. I'm only aggressive on the phone because of the bullshit. Because you're turning around saying there's a hard job enough for the bouncers to do. And I'll give you one prime example. I'm not going to give names, but there was a place where I was at. One time there was a place I was at, and I was in it. And they've got bars at the on the dance floor, right? Mm-hmm. Now they have a rule that you're not allowed to have drinks on the dance floor. Right? It's a good rule. Good rule, yeah. Oh, yeah, but hang on, Chris. But hang on, Chris. They have the tables on the dance floor, right? They have tables on the dance floor, right? So I'm walking down the stairs, heading towards the tables that's sitting on the dance floor where you're allowed to drink. What did the bouncer do? Push me. No, you're not allowed down here with drink on it. And I told down the stairs, you didn't even ask me where I was going. You just assumed that I was going onto the dance floor. You did not ask me where I was going. I was actually going onto one of the tables that was actually on the dance floor. It's the aggressiveness and it's the attitude and it's the arrogance of the bouncers because they don't ask. Now, when I was being pushed, who's to say that I didn't turn around and say, if I was an aggressive person, that I didn't turn around and bounce the glass off the bouncer's head? I just had to turn around and say to him, hang on, you're pushing me and I'm trying to get down to my table. But it was the bouncer that actually took the aggressive part of it and forced me and pushed me out of the way and started pushing me off a dance floor. Now, it's a rule that they had where they have tables. It's a simple reason. If, if somebody, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. John, I have a simple solution to that problem. If, if, you, if you're treated badly, go away. Never, no, you don't give that club your money ever again. In fact, tell all your friends. So they're going to lose a lot of money. That seems the, the, the only way to do it. All right, uh, very uh, quickly, 53104 for 20 cents, 6797 FM 04 is our phone number. I've been in a place millions of times, and uh, one night I was told reckless only when I said that I ha- ha- haven't, haven't been here. Uh, I've been in the place uh, more than the bouncer. Work that one out. How is that fair? No, it make, makes no sense. Uh, I agree with you. However, if they treat you badly, do what everyone else does. Just, just take to your Facebook. That usually sorts it out very quickly. Uh, 6797FM04 is our phone number. Uh, 53104420. I tell you what, a lot of you are uh, g- giving us uh, calls and text messages now about videos. Send them in. Just send them in to us. We'll have a look at them. We probably have to edit them. Uh, but do send them in. It's the FM04 phone show with Chris Barry. You can send us in uh, the video. Um, j- just give us the background and we, we, we will do the rest. 
Uh, bear with us on that one if you can. Garthi, listen to this, tweeted a picture earlier today of them seizing a scrambler in Santry belonging to a teenager under 16. Now, it was reported that the youth had been uh, racing it with two other teenagers. It's believed the bike was not insured and was bought as a Christmas present by his parents. The guard said the youth uh, racing scramblers in certain areas of Dublin has become a real problem and the danger to the public. This is, of course, comes after a 16-year-old from Cherry Orchard died on Christmas morning after crashing his bike into another. It's also believed this was given to him as a Christmas present. When we uh, put this up on our Facebook page, we were inundated by comments from parents who saw no harm in their kids uh, driving these bikes around, provided they knew how to drive them properly. Some said it was healthier interests than having them sitting around playing Xbox or hanging around street corners. Others say that any parent that buys a child a scrambler should be punished for being grossly irresponsible. What do you think? Is there any harm in giving your teenager or scrambler as a, a present? Is it a healthy interest uh, that keeps them out of trouble? Or maybe you think that any parent who buys one of these bikes uh, is is just irresponsible themselves. Are the Garthi right not to chase them? Uh, because it, it does cause problems. The guards won't chase them on the bikes for obvious reasons, because they don't want to be uh, responsible for a, a death or injury to the person driving the bike, or indeed uh, some of the members of the public. 6797 FM 104 is the number. Chris Barry on the FM 104 phone show. The man who gets Dublin talking. FM 104. Call us now on 6797 FM 104. So, a lot of you, uh, this is, re- there are actually a lot of people reacting to the guards tweeting the picture today of them seizing a scrambler bike in Santry belonging to a teenager under 16 and it was reported the youth had been racing it with two other teenagers. It's believed the bike was not insured and was bought as a Christmas present uh, by his parents. Now, there are people on the phone to us now giving out yards about the guards saying, have they nothing better to do? The guards did say that the youths uh, were racing scramblers around uh, certain parts of Dublin. It's become a major problem and a danger to the public. This, of course, uh, comes after a 16-year-old from Cherry Orchard sadly died on Christmas morning after crashing his bike into another. It's believed that he was given... This is a Christmas present as well. Um, and you've seen Facebook explode with uh, a lot of the stories coming in uh, on this as well. Uh, Dave is on the line. Dave, you think it's, uh, you know, it's a, maybe it's a, a nice Christmas present, but not a responsible Christmas present. Chris, all the short today on his hand and out machine guns and fucking hand grenades because it's, it's gone ridiculous now. The faster they go, they can't stop. They haven't a clue. Whatever chance you have on four wheels, you fuck all in two. Because we're getting calls from people now saying, yeah, it's driving us mad for months. This is not new. It's just got a bit worse over Christmas because, you know, a lot of them got these bikes uh, over Christmas uh, uninsured, uh, don't know how to use them, and it's a walking disaster. Now, right. there there are people giving out yards about the guard saying, who are they to take the, the bike off people? Chris, can I say something there? Go ahead. I watched around the area, right? These small little mini bikes. Right. These young lads are 13, probably less, going, uh, flying up and down. It's at least 50 kilometres an hour they're doing on it. If someone comes out of a driveway, Chris, they're not going to see that child. No, you're not. They are not going to see that child for love nor money. And who has to, who has to, bear, who has to, who has to get down with all this? It's the driver of the car that has tax, that has insurance, that has N. So if you're 14 that years old. License. If you're on your scramble, you, you know, all right, you know the usual defence is, ah, they're in the field. That's bull. Listen, That's bull. That's bull. Bullshit. Listen, how did he get her up to the fucking field in the first place? Are you telling me they walked that bike up? Don't bullshit me. I can merely tell you another thing. On these mini scramblers that are going around on as well, as I said, the kids, no helmets, no nothing, nothing. So you so think I, I it's... I the driver that comes out of a fucking driveway or comes up the road and these are coming around the corner and they're fucking stone dead. All right, sh- hang on. Sh- stay, stay with us there, Dave. Uh, is it irresponsible? There are loads of people reacting, by the way, to the guards. They, the guards tweeted the picture today. They were seizing a scrambler in Santry, belonged to a teenager under 16, and it said the, the youth had been racing it with two other teenagers, and it's believed the bike was not insured and was bought as a Christmas present as well. Uh, Sean is on the phone. Sean, Sean how are you? 
I'm grand. Okay. Yeah. You 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 race the scrambler around. You don't and you, you, you don't see a problem with this. No, I don't mean, you know. Like you, if you know how to drive, you know how to drive. But I can't speak for everyone. Like people don't know how to drive and yeah, they cause accidents. Like well, I, I don't I, know. Can like, I ask you something? Can I? As a scrambler yeah. driver, where, where where do you drive it? In the fields on the roads. Anyway, the fields. You have a helmet on, do you? Yeah. Yeah, you have a helmet on. So you don't drive it up the road on the main road. Yeah, yeah. we do, son. Yeah, we do, yeah. You do, so you have no insurance, you have no insurance then? He doesn't care. No. Do you? You don't care, really. Are you telling me if it's anyone... Awful. We should have insurance you. for it. Okay, if anyone hits you up on a car, you're going to fucking lie on the ground and say, oh, oh, me back, oh, me fucking neck, I'm um, this, that, and the other. That's, that's and you shouldn't fault. be even on the fucking road in the first place, you moron. It's my own fault, isn't it? It's your own fucking fault, but come here, I tell you, you will be the one that will be lying on the ground fucking whinging yeah. for this, whinging for that. Yeah, we'll see. You, know what? you have to country the way it is, you're a fucking dickhead, because you don't understand what you're fucking actually shut doing. Your, Just, shut your mouth. Man, don't tell me to shut me fucking mouth. I'm fucking... Seven, Easy on the language, Dave. Nearly. Seven years of age, nearly, and I'm still paying nearly 600 euros. 600 hey, euros. Here's, here's one. I'll just read this out to you guys. Uh, Chris, I drove motorbikes for years. And one sure thing is that they break your bones. And if you're lucky, that's uh, that's all. Uh, but giving it giving it a scrambler to your kids for Christmas, a lot of people are saying, not a good idea. Not a good idea at all. Another woman rang and said, uh, well, that's what, that's what the kids wanted. That's what we gave it to. Uh, and there, a lot of people are still... Do you know the major reaction? You, you're going to love this, Dave. The major reaction we're getting from parents now is screaming about the nerve of the guards to tweet a picture of them taking a bike off one of the kids. No, do you know what? I think they're perfectly right to do that. So they are actually out there doing their jobs. That's what they're doing. That's what they're being paid to do. And people are being pissed off with carry on with all these lads going across greens and wrecking the fucking greenery area for no reason. Just because they want to show off and they're going to do this and they're going to do that. And then all of a sudden they hit a fucking granite wall and they're brown bread. So where did the parents get the money to pay for the funeral? Just think about this. You're 14. You could be 14 years of age. You have you have your, your scrambler bike. You're going to just give it all, everything, oh, yeah. everything oh, you can yeah. get out, out of it, you're going to. You can drive it as fast as you want, but try stopping it. Just try stopping it. Say if he skidded. Just say, for instance, he went so fast and he skidded and there was two little kids or a, or a, a, a nanny or a, a, the mother of the child coming out the gateway yeah. with a child in a fucking buggy and that fucking thing hit them at that speed. Okay, stay with us, stay with us. 6797FM04 is our phone number. 53104 for 20 cents. How many people, seriously, would give, uh, uh, all right, you want to give your kids everything, you give them a scrambler for Christmas. The guards, uh, and I think they're, they're, they're taking a lot of scramblers off kids now because Christmas, it was big for Christmas, let's be honest. Steo is on the phone. Steo, how are you? How are you? Okay, you, you rally your scrambler a lot. No, not a lot, no. Okay. No you, value either. All right, what do you do? You get, do you get hassle from the guards or what? Uh, sometimes, yeah. All right. Yeah, well, like, love you, boy. Sean, you were saying, for, for whatever reason, that you, uh, you said you can speak for everybody else, but yeah. there are guys out there who, they do really stupid things, let's be honest. There is. So look, if you find Jordan for the car, you, you are, like, you're... You can have a problem as well, like, you know what I mean? But you've no it insurance. Sean, you've no... You, no I mean, you're, you're, you're the one that's driving it with no tax and insurance, you tick. So what sort of a gobshite are you now? And say if you were to take someone's life, you'd be another one that'd be up and gone off the fucking road and running up the road and say, no, it wasn't mine, it wasn't me, you asshole. Well, hang on a second. Simon, you, you, you think people are being really harsh on these kids? I actually do, Chris. You know what? A lot of the time, a lot of them are on the field and they're not causing any harm. Hold on. And as well, they, a lot of them do know what they're doing and they're aware that they can get caught and they can get in trouble and the X, Y, and Z can happen. So they're more careful. Most of the time, they are careful with it. So I'm saying if one or two incidents happens, but that's like anything. Incidents can happen. But with these lads, a lot of them do know what they're doing. They are being responsible. Well, ho- hold on. This gets a little bit worse. Chris, I, this is from Amanda just text in by the way Chris I know somebody who bought their 7 year old a scrambler no helmet no nothing out out on it every day now I know people were saying I did this when I was a kid or whatever maybe you did Uh, but let's be honest 
kids being kids, they're going to compete with each other. And this is what you were saying, Dave. There's nothing to yeah. stop these guys. Absolutely. You could walk out of your house tonight, yeah. tomorrow morning, you and the, these guys, they, they're not deliberately going to have a go at you, but they could be doing even 40 miles an hour, th- even Grand, 30, Grand and they hit you. fucking auto job. It has to be, because you know what? It all comes down to these computer games. They think they can do what they fucking like on them, and then all of a sudden... They have yeah, but they can hit the reset the button on, on a computer and, uh, game. Exactly. And the foot, as, as I said, the faster they go, you think it's a great adrenaline. But try stopping it. Try stopping it at a speed. Uh, there is a lot of parents in that, though, that do actually teach the children, or teach the young children, whatever, how to do these things, how to use these things, how they're actually done. And these things, this has been happening for years. It's not new now, you know? I mean, no, I mean, we're not talking about these. We're not talking about the kids that's actually going out scrambling, use it as, as a. Uh, in competitions or anything like that. We're talking about gobshites. Gobshites that come out and buy their kids. These you can't scammers. blame the kids. You can't no. blame the kids. No, but I tell you one thing. It all starts off, oh, I want, I want, I want. And as the years go on, they get what they want. Hang on they a sec. what they want. Hang on. Uh, let me stay with us there, Dave. How many people agree with Dave? Dave, you think parents buying it, it's madness. It's madness crazy. to buy them. It's absolute ludicrous. Absolute ludicrous. I tell you one thing, the most just give them a fucking arm gun and just go out and do what you want because that's the way the world is going with it. Well, it's crazy. Well, so far, uh, so some of them coming into us, uh, a seven-year-old, here's another my 11-year-old got a mini uh, motorbike for Christmas. She also got a helmet, a jacket and gloves, boots and a bike. Uh, it was put into my Jeep and brought to her grandfather's in the countryside, which is grand. We're not talking about the countryside. We're talking about, you know, greens. We're talking about yeah, housing we're estates. We're talking about around housing estates, yeah. Yeah, well, where cars are coming in and out of driveways so quickly that they don't realise sure they can't see them they can't see them sure they're coming that fast I mean I mean we, we, we have a policy here in Ireland that the, the longest that you can drive is 120 kilometres an hour right mm-hmm. and then it's 200 kilometres an hour you can go what's the sense of that I don't understand that I just don't get that hang on a second Debbie's on the phone as well Debbie you're live in FM 104 how are you Debbie hey Chris not bad um, you, you bought your 12 year old a scrambler a couple of years back I bought, yeah, I bought my son, Darren, um, a, a scrambler when he was about 12, but now I wouldn't buy a scrambler because, um, like, the kids need fields and all, and to be supervised and all, do you know that way? Because the kids are I calling us in now. My, um, my younger brother, yeah. if you understand, at the same age, I bought him a scrambler, and the police actually chased him, Chris, and um, to chase him into a wall and broke his two legs. How old was he? How old was he? He was about 13 at the time. He was How t- was he insured to be on it, like, was he... Oh, why did he go? Why did he go faster when he seen the squad car? Why didn't he just stop? Yeah, I told him. Why, why didn't would... he just stop? Huh? Why didn't he just stop the motorbike and just say, OK? What, what, hold on, what child is going to stop at all? So you're telling me, so you're telling me, you handed, you handed him, you handed him a fucking motorbike to do what he liked with it. And he wasn't supervised. Therefore, he scrambled off on the bike to get away from the police and he crashed. Of course he did. He's not going to stop by the police to hand them a bike. But oh, but he is. You're a wuss. You're a wuss. What, what the, the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Give him no, a no, no, let Debbie speak. Let Debbie speak. speak. Just shut your mouth for a minute, will you? You're God, show you. Rest, the rest. Come here till I tell you, but now, in hindsight, now, I wouldn't buy a scrambler. I was young and foolish then. Yeah, right. I'm just saying, if, 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 the, if the place was um, supervised and he had places for the kids... But I wouldn't buy one now because they are too dangerous and I was stupid back then. He could have been and dead. Death traps. Yeah. Death traps. You could have been burying the child. Huh? You could have handed him his fucking death cert. Do you not yeah. realise that? Well. You could have been handing him his death cert. I know, but when you're young and foolish, you don't think that way. No, but that's what I'm saying. you got sense now, haven't you? Ah, oh, yeah. There's no way yeah. by a child is no. going now. I think it's fucking crazy what they're doing, people are doing. And, and they're going out and they're crazy. borrowing the money left, right and fucking centre to do this. And then all it of a sudden, crazy. it could have been, God forbid, the following week, they're fucking burying the child. I know, I know, yeah. And where are they going to borrow that fucking money from? OK, there, there are people... Uh, just looking at some of the text messages coming in. 53104 for 20 cent. Uh, are these parents on drugs, Quiz? You cannot hand a child something that can cause death. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's insured or not. It's complete madness. And th- that's Dave's point as well. I'm going to take a quick break and come back to you. 6797FM04 is our phone number. 53104 for 20 cent. Debbie, uh, you heard, heard exactly what she said. 
somebody just picked Debbie up on something when she turned around and said he wasn't he was 13 at the time he was on a scrambler he uh, broke t- his two legs okay and he, the reason that happened is the police chased him and he wasn't going to stop for the guards so the, the guards could take the bike. That's what she said at the time. 6797-FM04 is our phone number. Chris Perry on the FM 104 phone show. The man who gets Dublin talking. Miss him. Miss out. FM 104. Tell you what is getting a little reaction is the very fact that the guards uh, who tweeted the picture earlier today of them seizing a scrambler in Santry belonging to a teenager under 16 and it was reported the youth had been racing it with two others. A lot of people are saying, how dare the guards do that? It wasn't insured. Uh, there are a lot of uh, you uh, giving us stories now. These guys don't know what they're doing. Uh, as Dave was saying, uh, a lot of you are agreeing with them. A lot, a lot of people are agreeing, saying, look, it is outrageous. This has been going. It's not just Christmas. It's been going on for months. Months and months and months. Nice idea, but it's absolutely crazy. If you had, I mean, Dave, you were saying this. If you had the nice little idea where here's a lovely little field, away you go, that's grand. But the reality is very, very different. Chris, the cops done a thing there years ago about the joyriders, right? And they actually started up. And they, most of them young lads that were joyriders are now mechanics fixing and doing their own thing yeah. in their own garages. And they have they have field as well. If you go down to the local guard station, they will give you a track where you can bring your child. But you see, they don't give a shit. They just buy these fucking things and hand them to them. There you go, son. Off you go. Do what you like. I don't give a shit. I'm either going to the pub or I don't give a shit. Yeah, but not, not, every, not every parent is like that. I mean, accidents no, happen. Well, they do. Well, yeah, they do happen. But why did, why did he run? Why, did he, why didn't he just stop the fucking bike and explain... Yeah, you're in the wrong, slapping the wrist, we're taking the bike, your parents can go down tomorrow or the next day and take the bike back. Yeah, but and Debbie, I'm Debbie, Debbie you're, you're, you're thir- sorry, Debbie, you're 13 year old, he, his, he, his two legs were broken. His two legs are broken, yeah, but come here, it's that day, is it? It is, yeah. It is, yeah. You always bring it in that you hand the child uh, to scramble and then the parents go to the pub. I said, no, I said, I didn't say all, you see, I didn't say all parents, that's what I said to you. I said, that's what some parents do do, to just hand them over, say, there you go, don't give a shit, but probably you're a different parent. You were there when I have them, were you? I, I was young and foolish when I bought that bike. But you were young and foolish. No, but no, but no. did you know where he was, no? Excuse me, excuse me. No, no, I would have bought him a computer or something. You, you, you would have bought a, a computer. He was up in the field and tell it. That's where he was, where all the kids were. But you you did say, Debbie, before the break, that oh, he man. wasn't going to... The reason that he crashed, uh, because the cops chased him, the cops don't chase him anymore. get away from the cops. Chris, no child is going to stop after getting a £700 ah. pound book motorbike. Now, come on. Especially at the age of... So what's he into now, then? Try your best. What's he into now, then? What? What's he into now? now like, yeah, what does he, he do now? He's going to college now. He's going to college. Well, yeah, they are... Uh, now. Well, they are... Uh, yeah, he has a lot of sense then, hasn't he? He, he has a lot of sense, hasn't he? He has got a lot of sense, thank God, yeah? Yeah, but well, there you go. After you buying him the fucking bike and breaking his two fucking legs. I didn't break his legs, so please. You didn't break his legs, but you didn't You didn't explain the rules to him. You didn't explain to him you can go out, son, and you can go down to the shop on your fucking motorbike, no helmet on or anything else, or go to a field where he's unsupervised. How do you know? You didn't say to him, on? and if you pulled How him, do you son, know he hadn't got a helmet on? Stop. That's all he had to do was stop, and he would have been in that fucking situation. The bike would have been taken off him, and you would have went down the day after, the following day after that, and got the bike back. I didn't get the bike back now because no, the bike was but mine. you could have done that. No, but you fucking chose to let him out on his own on the fucking bike. Why well, you buy him a hand grenade and machine gun? Well, I'm fucking ridiculous of what you're. You know what I mean? It's fucking ridiculous. Okay, hang on, hang on. When you're young, you don't think that way. Yeah, but I the... would have been probably only 22 or something back then. Well, not I say if he had a lost his life. Again. Say if he had a lost his life instead of his two fucking legs. What way would you be today? I'd be in bits, yeah, of course You'd be in bits. You'd be in bits. But I tell you, I'd hope you'd be under the grass with him if that's the way you had it turned out. What did you say? Fucking buying him that. That was fucking ridiculous. Ah, uh, well, come here now. Is your, is your name Dave? It is, yeah, you keep fucking you saying, Dave, you yeah, it is, Dave. Every night, I said I bought the child a scrambler when he was talking, 
Young and foolish I was, but I oh, wasn't. But you wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it again. In hindsight, I know today that they're too dangerous, and I wouldn't buy a child a scrambler. Okay, because there are a lot of people calling us in saying it's got out of control. This it's not just Christmas; it's been going on for months in various areas around the city. Six seven nine seven FM zero four is our phone number. Uh, a lot of people reacting to, to what Debbie said and Dave uh, too. Uh, I'll, get, I'll get to that in a second. Paul is on the phone. Paul, you had a you had a near miss. Yeah, um, I was in Coolock there. Right, I was up the road one day and there last week. And I heard the sirens, I looked around, I was only doing 20 mile an hour in the car, and next, next of all, coming out of the side road, a bike pulled out in front of me. The officer taking a chase off the cops. And was this and, a uh, scrambler bike? It wasn't much it was, of a bike, it was, no? It was one of the scramblers, yeah. Yeah. Um, he came within millimetres of the front of my car. Now, if he had hit the front of my car and died, it would have been the parents at my front door. Giving out me, to you. Exactly. me on killing them. Is there, is there no fault with their children on these things? They're not insured. That, well, that's it. They shouldn't be on the road. All right. No, it's all right. Just give, just buy it for them. Give them the key and say, there you go, son. Get the fuck out of my hair. Bye, bye. Do what you like. See you now. And you don't give a shit who else has life to destroy, although they're probably destroying their own lives. It just takes a split second for something to happen. And that's the end. It's all over. It's fucking lights out for everyone. It's not just his family. It's everyone's family. Do you know, Sean, there, there are people now calling us in and they just don't understand why anybody would give if you don't have the right facilities for it. OK, you want to give your kids everything. I get that. I understand that. But to give them, say, a scrambler, I mean, how old was the guy on it, Sean? Sorry, Paul. Um, He would have been about 15, 16. Jesus Christ. There you go. I mean, if you'd have... He came within millimetres. He missed my car by millimetres because I jammed on and skidded. The cops stopped, they seen it, they looked and, and they th- thought it was game over for him. He ended up bouncing onto the far side of the road and nearly hitting the railing. Had you got I, a rang up, on? I rang the guards the next day to find out whether he was, um, whether the bike was, life. well, no, whether the bike was caught or not. But lo and behold, I think he was driving around. He had a helmet. helmet, the helmet's not going to save you. No, There's you're right there. Not if he hits your car, no. Not if the speed he'd be gone. And was he, was he driving at speed, Paul? Yeah, he was doing... He, he, there was no way he was stopping. He couldn't have stopped. Yeah, well then he just went straight through a fucking stop sign, probably. It, that's exactly. Yeah, I had the I had the right away, but luckily enough, I was doing that's twenty miles an hour. That you you were on the ball. But that's it. I drive. I yeah. drive. But, that, but then oh. again, if there had been another driver that wasn't on the ball, that it was an older person, they wouldn't have had a fucking chance with that young lad. You you were to, you used your initiative and you fucking stopped. You knew exactly what was going on. Well, that's it. Well, the parents would have been at my door blaming me on it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And they fucking bought him it. Uh, that's it. Well, well not, there you go. Be. Well, that's what you have to face now, me old flower, because that's the way this fucking country's gone. It's gone well, pear shaped. Well, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Uh, Sean, you, you raise your 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 scramble around. Now you said you've no insurance, Sean. No. None at all. No. Yeah. Look, they have nowhere to put us in the bike league. The like, people like football. They give them football pitches. Skateboards, they give them skate parks. People, like, you said it's a ground thing. Why don't they provide any facilities for it? They don't. They have one in Dublin, I think. I think that's out in East Wall. But that's, that's miles away from where I live, so that's no good to me. And this is what you were saying earlier on. You have to, I mean, Dave made the point, and he was right, when people say, do you use the roads? Well, of course you do. How are you going to get to a field if you don't use the roads? Yeah. Chris, can I say, Chris, yeah. can I say something to you? I say, Chris, okay, some people use this as a sport, right? Right. They'd have a trailer that they hook onto a car and off they go to do whatever they have to do. Even if it's just a track course, anything, even if it's a, a bike race, they still have a place to go. You always have a fucking place to go. But if you haven't got that transport, why would you buy that and just hand them the key and say, there you go, do what you like? Because that's what, exactly what they're doing. And then all of a sudden, it's not just up the road to go to the field. It's going to the fucking shop, or it's going to the off There's always something else involved in it, where something goes wrong, and it always happens in a split second. OK, Sean, and many of your mates do the same thing. I mean, there must be yeah. a good few of you doing it at the moment. Yeah, there is, yeah. There's about six or seven of us. Yeah. How would you feel about, about the cops? I mean, do they give you a bad time? They do and they don't. Like, well, they'll show up and they'll go. And we don't know, really. Like, they'll bark at you a bit, will they? Yeah, they will, yeah. 
Hang on a sec, lads. Hang on a sec. 6797FM04 is our phone number. 53104 for uh, 20 cent. If you've any very quick thoughts on that. Uh, Debbie, would you worry? I mean, because lads being lads, there could be six or seven of them between 13 and 15. I mean, I can remember when we were 13 or 15, we'd be up to all sorts. You know, you, you, you do all, all the things you shouldn't be doing. Chris, it'd be nothing like that, in fairness. Come on. Hang on a second, hang on a second. Let me, De- Debbie, can you hear me? Try and get her phone dodgy. We'll try and get, it, get her back for you. Because uh, a lot of people are reacting to what Debbie was saying. And to be fair, she said, look, she was young and foolish uh, and she knows better now. Uh, but let me go to Laura. Hello, Laura, how are you? Hi, Chris. How are you? Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. Uh, you agree with Dave, Debbie? I do Debbie. entirely. I agree with that chap 100% what he's saying. It's like giving someone a load of gun and saying, bye-bye, off you go. Because an innocent person is going to come out of a driveway, out of, their, um, out of the estate, out of their driveway, and won't even see that bike coming even down the road, and then they have a funeral on their hands. Okay. I think it's an absolute disgrace. And I agree with the guards what they did. Even though Sean is saying his six, him and his six mates, he seems more senior, but his six mates, they have no insurance, they have the bikes, uh, you know, they don't have anywhere else to, to, to race them, so that's why they race them. What do you mean? There's, there's nowhere else there's to no, race There's nowhere else to race them, that's what they said. Oh, that's a load of bull. Bollocks. Okay, I, I agree with you, Dave, that's a load of yeah, bull. That's bullshit. They have tracks all for all these young lads. If they want how can the we get them? Barry, how can we get them? Well, come here to tell you, in the first place, if you haven't got transport, you shouldn't be out in the fucking thing in the first place. You should have a little trailer that you hook onto a car and you go to these places. So if you haven't got that facility, don't use the bike. OK, I'll come back to you after the break. 6797FM04 is our phone number. 53104 for 20 cent. Uh, if you have any quick comments on this, we will take it. Uh, this is, and we're still getting reaction to, to, to the very fact that the guards tweeted the picture earlier today of them seizing a scrambler and sentry uh, belonging to a teenager who was under 16. And it was reported the youth had been uh, racing it uh, with two other teenagers. It's believed the bike was not insured and was bought as a Christmas present by his parents. And the guards have said the youths racing scramblers around certain parts of Dublin have become a real problem. Now, question came in when I read that earlier. What's the real problem, Chris? What, you know, what, why is there a problem here? Uh, th- and because there are people gobsmacked that uh, people think it's a great idea to, to buy the kids this. Is it? Is it such a good idea? 53104 for uh, 20 cents. 6797 FM 104 is our phone number. Chris Perry on the FM 104 phone show. The man who gets Dublin talking. Miss him. Miss out. FM 104. Here's a quick, we're going to do a little poll on this one actually for you. Uh, 53104 for 20 cents because I tell you why. The amount of people calling us in uh, and they're just annoyed at the guards. Uh, taking the bikes off the kids is one. Should the guards, if they see somebody in a scrambler, could be your kid, could be your neighbour's kids, and, and just take the bike off you? Not insured, shouldn't be on the road, good luck. That's it. Is that too cruel? Uh, Sean, is that too cruel? I don't know, can you say that again, Chris? Is, is, it, is it wrong for the guards just to take the bike off you? No, well, sometimes you can understand sometimes, like, if they're wrecking on the roads, like, they deserve to get taken off them. If they're out of the way, like, I don't have a problem with that. If they're out of the way, but... OK, if they're out of the way, that's fine. But when you see... You heard what Paul was saying there before the break. He nearly, he nearly ran one of them over. Because, yeah, no, by the way, should the guards chase ch- chase someone who's 16 years of age on a bike? No, no that's... I completely agree with that. I don't think they should chase them at all. Because they're not, they said they're not, but I mean, you heard what Paul was saying ha- ha- happened a, a few weeks back and maybe the guy was 16, 17 and he, he, he nearly hit him. Yeah, now to be honest, like the voice I was in the was neural. So you're not just going to stop and hand over your voice. We're well, youngsters, we want to drive off, we like getting the chase. Do you know what I mean? Like, so. so is that part of the, is, that's part of the thing, you like it, you like a chase? No, it's not, but like, you're obviously, you're not handing over your voice, that's what the was neural to the guards. Or yeah, maybe even more. On Hang on a second. All right, there you go. Uh, should the guards chase these kids on the scrambler bikes? Uh, 6797FM04 is our phone number. Uh, do you think they should? 
And, and when they do catch them, should they take the bikes off them? Because a lot of them have no insurance and they shouldn't really be racing it in the first place. Or is that just too heavy on it and, and, and it's unfair? People are allowed to be kids, let's be honest. And this is that's what the guy said. They like an L chase and they're not going to, you know, they put a lot of work into their bike and they're not going to hand it over. Uh, at all. 53104 for 20 cents, 6797 FM 04 is our phone number. Simon, you were saying that the the guards shouldn't be chasing them or should? No, like, you know, if you're going to chase them, if the guards chase them, they're just going to antagonise them and it's going to make the situation worse. Even like our one was saying there about our son, that he broke both his legs because he obviously got a fright when he saw the guards or he got the trailer to chase and That's just the way they're going to see it because they are only young at the end of the day. And a lot of them, they just, they love, they love riding the scrammers and the, and the quads and that. And a lot of them are, they, they don't like doing anything else. Some of them may not like playing. But what about the guards them? taking the bikes off them? Yeah, but what's that going to do? They're going to get another cheaper bike or whatever, or a different bike for, from somewhere else. They're going yeah, to get it from somewhere else. When they're taking them off, when they're taking them off them, they're taking a weapon off the fucking road. It's as simple as that. And by the way, when they did put it up on the internet, I take my hat off them because it shows you the little shit that go, goes into that page and has a look and see what's going to happen to their fucking bike. Yeah, but a lot of them don't care. A lot of them are going to just run away. You, you, a lot of you even a clue? Have you even a clue what these are doing out in the roads? Have you a yeah, clue what's going them. on? I've seen them. I've seen them. I've seen them. I've seen them. Tell you, I'm would you not be on the fucking phone tomorrow, tomorrow if you knew that a child was killed yeah. and a, child, a young man skidded off a motorbike and killed a child? Would you be on tomorrow, would you? No, no, it, was them? Horrible, it was horrible that incident that happened with the, with the kid dying or whatever. Yeah. Cherry so why it. don't you even be sympathetic and just fucking say, yeah, I tell you one thing, the cops were fucking really taking the boys And now, it might make a difference, but it'll make them fucking wake up, see what they're spending their money on, that's going to be taken off them after a couple of hours. Hang on a sec, oh, no. hang on a sec, guys. Uh, uh, Simon, you're more or less saying, you allow kids to be ki- kids, but also, you're really, you don't seem very impressed with the guards chasing 16-year-olds on scrambler bikes. No, I mean, they could be doing other things. I mean, the guards are just going to antagonise them and make the situation worse. And it, it even happens with joy riders and cars and that. And it, it's been proved time and time again. Chasing the, the guards aren't, the guard cars not going to catch a motorbike, let's face it. And a bike's going to be able to cut through a field or cut through a short area or whatever. So basically, you know, the guards chasing them, it's just going to make the situation worse. So we're just going to see the thrill of the chase or some of them are just going to get a fright and become, become a bit... Um, uneasy or whatever, you know? Hang on a sec, guys. Let me go to John as well. John, you're live in FM 04. Uh, go ahead. How's it going, Chris? First of all, I'd like to uh, make out a point. Is everybody overlooking the fact that these are minors? No. And it's, Ill- it's illegal to give a motorbike to a minor. You see, they, this is where people will say, ah, sure, it's only a scrambler bike, John. It's only, okay, well, here, here's, a, here's a quick one for you. Christmas morning, 25 past 10, I was driving up through Fingless. Right. I, drive a, I drive a van. Okay. And only I was quick enough to spot this guy on a scrambler about 14 years of age coming through a red light in a wheelie and I was able to throw my van up onto the path. And when I followed him up to his house, the exact words of his father were after there was nobody killed. You're joking. No, that's exactly what it was told to me. And what I said to his father was, if he had damaged my van, I would have taken a lawsuit out against the parents. Because the simple reason is, if I walk into an off license tonight and I buy alcohol for a minor, I can be charged. Yeah, but you could have killed the kid. Not deliberately, but there could have been a very, that could have been a very serious accident. Yes, but the, the parents didn't care. See, what was the reaction? Actually, I'm, I'm really interested. When you went up, you followed him, okay, uh, and you went up to the father, and you, did, did you say to the, the, the father, I nearly killed your son. He broke a red light. He's no idea what he's doing. Exactly I presume what you... I said to, exactly what I said to his son, to, to the father. Was, and, what, what did the, and the father didn't care? No, didn't care. He just said, shut up, nobody killed. I said, no, there was nobody killed because I was quick enough to throw the van up onto the pot. I said, no, we've damaged, damaged my axle on my van, and you're going to pay for it. He says, ah, don't be like that, and walked away from me. How, how, old, was, like how old was the kid? Like About 14. Now, yeah, another, like another thing I'd love to, I'd love to know... Un- unbelievable, is, unbelievable. Well, like, the, 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 they were giving out about the guards taking the bike. Yeah. Like, the guards will take you a car, they even know when she wouldn't, don't they? Correct, they will, yeah. And but they can. They take the bike? And they do. These, these boys don't even have a license, never mind insurance. So, there you go, Simon. 
Yeah, but come on, Chris, a lot of them, they're just doing it on the fields and that, and yeah, they still get a bike taken off them. I mean, they're not really breaking the law, they're on a field. I mean, obviously, these bikes and squads are designed. Well, Simon, they are breaking the law. They're not licensed to drive these bikes, whether it be on a field, whether it be in a house, whether but it be in a garden. But they don't seem to care about the law. This is what you're saying, John. They don't give a damn about it. But the I tell you, I tell you, the parents should be held responsible. The, the law in this country doesn't make any sense a lot of the time anyway. I mean, the laws can be fairly stupid anyway, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't make any difference whether the law is stupid or not. The law is the law. Yeah, but still, I mean, a lot of these lads aren't even... A lot of these lads aren't stupid. They know what they're doing. They know what they, they're running the risk. But the, the guy that John met on Christmas morning, he was only 14. He didn't know what he was doing. Yeah, well, that was a minor. That was one fella. Like, there's some that do, some that don't. But it was enough to destroy my life if I had to hit him. Well, Correct. A lot, these, a lot of these lads are more intelligent than that. A lot of these lads wouldn't be like but that. But they're not intelligent. They're driving a bike illegally with no tax, no insurance, no license. Where's the intelligence so in that? The, yeah, sorry. So mm-hmm. half of the country driving with no insurance or tax. Yes, and if they get caught, they're not going to be on the radio yeah, screaming and taking well. me bike away. <laughs> No, but you're, you're think, I presume, uh, John, you feel the guards were damn right to take the, the bike off them. A hundred percent. And I, I actually do think that the parents should be fined for giving the bike to him in the first place. Uh, would you stop? I mean, a lot of these lads as well, they'll get another bike for a lower price or whatever. They'll get one somewhere. They'll get one off another one of the lads. But where is a 13 or 14 year old getting the money? Uh, they get it. From the parents, obviously. Exactly, yeah. from the parents. If they're, if they're that young, it's from the parents. Uh, yeah, where sh- did they get the money from, Chris? It doesn't make... tax. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah but you're saying all oh, that miners said, do you miss that breaking the law, blah, blah, blah. Are you going to tear that guy with the same bush or tear in the morning? No, because that guy is not breaking the law. OK, yeah, but may- maybe the parents need to, to review what they're doing here. Uh, OK, quick question. Are the guards right to chase these guys? Uh, because they're... There's, there's, some were being told they don't, and now you're telling us, well, actually, they do. Should the guards chase them, Dave? Chris, I have to say, they should chase them, not in an extent that there's a danger to life or to the danger of the person on the bike, but I do think they should take the bikes off them and put it up on the internet and let the others fucking see what's happening because it's wrong what they're doing. If we had no tax, no insurance, no NCT, no nothing you wouldn't have a car under your arse. And Simon, cop onto yourself. Think about it, you moron. Ah, oh, come here. They, know, uh, they look at the internet, they see these different things on the internet all the time. Simon, Simon, listen. Simple fucking Simon. There's something, there's something fucking missing in your brain. Do you know that? That you could think that you could hand a fucking child because a key. Keep up the a key, a key to destroy, to destroy two or three, two or three fucking family lives, you moron. You mo- Simon, stop. Hang on a second. Paul is on the phone as well. Paul, how are you? Paul is on line one. Is Paul on line one? How are you, Paul? Hi, how's it going? Go ahead, Paul. Look at Chris. It's the simple fact that allowed to be used in the field and the field only. You can have the Sanctuary Guard Station there and you can see yes. thousands of bikes in the warehouse. Thank you. Over the same thing. Thank you. That death traps by law, but other people use them as a hobby. Yeah, not 14-year-old kids, though. No, I don't agree with 14-year-olds. A minimum of 18 years of age to have a scrambler. That's, you know, but what do you make of Because a lot of people are saying to us now, this, all right, it blew up at Christmas in the sense that a lot of kids got this as a Christmas present. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but this has been going on for months. Months. You see the Ballymun fields there, Chris, all the time, and they're only youngsters. They're not even in their teens and they're driving bikes. Where do you get the money from? You'll never know. We have so far, and Amanda said, a seven-year-old, an 11-year-old. I mean... In anyone's book, that makes no sense. No. Seriously, no. Paul, how how can anyone think there's a seven year old, there's an L scrambler off you go? No. no because to so get really. to the to get to the field, they have to go on the road. They're too young, Paul, or they're too young, Chris and anyway. That's been honest with you. They're too young, way, way too young to have a bike. The people actually giving out about rickshaws now. Different case in terms. We're dealing with kids here. Uh five three one oh four for twenty seven. By the way, uh Paul, the the load of people on Twitter. Really? I agree with them, 110%. There you go. Uh, 
it's amazing how things are changing with support for the guards now. Anyway, 53104 for 20 cent. Chris, 51. I drove bikes all my life. Uh, and I know what it's like uh, to, to get uh, broke up, absolutely. But when you're 14... Come on, it's a, it's a little bit dangerous because you're gonna you're gonna push it as hard as you can. Um, but Paul is right. I mean, the, even off duty members of the guards have been on to us saying, yeah, it's it's driving some areas mad. Uh, these scrambler bikes absolutely going uh, absolutely awol.